Hello, everyone. My name is Christy Nowak, and I'm the Composition Librarian. And in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is developing a topic and searching the databases. And the reason those two ideas are together is because it's a really good idea when you're starting to think about what you might want to research, to think about how you're going to search it and what types of information you're going to find and want to find. And so just some common things that I see, and this is a screenshot from the database, and I'll explain it a little bit if it's hard to see. Um, I often see students start with a really big idea like climate change, uh, which is a great thing to research. But if you just have that idea of climate change, um, you can see I highlighted it, that has over 200,000 results. And if I look through those results, they'd kind of all be about different things, different aspects of climate change. And another thing I see really frequently, this is an example search about climate change and how it impacts health in Northern Colorado. Here there are two results uh, and they're not really relevant. Uh, these results just came up because someone from the University of Northern Colorado was working on the project. So this is an example of a search that's really too narrow. And so this is a good idea to think about when you're starting to put together your search is like, how specific do you wanna be? What kinds of things are you gonna be looking for? That sort of thing. So in general, good topics and searches include two to three specific precise concepts. So if I was looking for climate change, I might want to look at how that impacts elderly populations. I might want to look at, um, you know, how that relates to the economy or, you know, how it impacts health. There are lots of different directions I could go in. Um, in general, good searches don't use a lot of ambiguous or vague language. Oftentimes this is like benefits, pros, cons, effects. These don't really help us find, you know, the kind of specific, precise um, articles that you need to really do a good job on your project. And related to that, you want to avoid biased or evaluative language. And I think this one is really important because I know in a lot of composition classes, you're going to be putting together an argument. But if you put together your search so that you only get one side of the argument, you're not going to get those sources you need that present a balanced perspective. So an example of biased language is, you know, if you just look for benefits or if you do a search about GMOs and health and you just use negative terms like cancer, um, that's going to that's going to bias your results in your search and it's going to be hard to sort of get that balanced perspective. So in terms of an example, um, this is my example topic. And what I'm going to show you is how I can break this down into terms that I can use to effectively search the databases. So my example topic is how can we effectively address the women's health issues caused by climate change? The specific precise ideas in that are women's health and climate change. I don't need to worry about effectively address issues. Those are all kind of vague, like I was talking about earlier. Um, so these are the concepts that I'm going to want to focus on in my search. It's also really useful, especially because sometimes you don't find what you need on the first search, to sort of think about if there are any related ideas you might want to explore. So examples here, maternity care, clinic funding, health disparities, gender disparities, uh, rising sea levels, extreme weather. These are some potential things that I can look at, especially if I don't find what I'm looking for right on my first search. So that's an example of thinking about your topic and breaking it down into keywords. Now I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and pull up the library's website. This is lib.colostate.edu. It's a really important website to know because it's basically the portal to all of the research resources that you have access to as a CSU student. So all of our databases, all of the cool things you can access online, you can access this website from anywhere, um, just as I'll show you in a second, when you try to access some of those resources. If you're off campus, it'll ask you to sign in. So Keep track of this website, bookmark it, find a way to get back to it because you're going to be using it a lot. So for this assignment, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the A to Z database list. And this is the complete list of all of the databases you have access to as a CSU student. It is 375, which is a lot. Um, we're definitely not gonna go into all of those today, but I just wanna let you know that there are other resources available if you don't find what you're looking for 
or you know, when you start doing research for your major or things like that. For this assignment, I typically recommend the database called Academic Search Premier, which is a general article database. So it has both popular and peer-reviewed articles, and it also covers pretty much all topics. So you know, you'll be able to find stuff whether you're an English major or a science major. And I mentioned that if you're off campus, it'll ask you to sign in. I'm off campus right now. This is just asking me to log in with my EID and password. And um, that'll load a page where I can start putting together my search. And like we were talking about earlier, um, the best way to start once you have a sense of what your topic's going to be is to put one of your specific precise concepts into each search box. So I might just start with climate change. And this is the search I showed you where, you know, it has 200,000 results. Um, they're not really looking like they're very related to each other. And so I'm going to get more specific by adding women's health. And when I do that, so now I'm down to 50 results. And looking through these results, they're looking a lot better. These are like more related to each other. They're more on topic. These are looking much better. And if I didn't find what I wanted, I could sort of play around with my search. So climate change and gender disparities. And I could sort of see what was going on there, see if I got any different results. I could also break this into three ideas and do climate change, gender, and health. Um, so there are lots of different options for how to put together your search. You can see this gave me about 300 results. So you can see that when I switch up my search, I'm going to be getting different results. And then by this point, you're probably going to be seeing some you want to look at. You click on an article to see the full information about it. This will give you things like, you know, additional terms you could look at. You can see the abstract. There are options over here for getting the full text. In the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about sort of advanced options for the databases. But this is just to get, give you a sense of what it looks like to put together a strong search. And when you're able to put together those searches, you know, you're going to get better results and be in a really good place to begin your um, bibliography and paper. So if you have any questions about this, this is my contact information, and this is the link to the online research guide for CO150. So if you have any questions, you know, if you're having trouble with your search, please feel free to let me know and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.